Hi, this is Stephen Brower from Ranton Valley Community College. Uh, this is an addendum to the demo from June 11th. Um, one of the things, let me just switch here for a second. One of the things that I did not do in my demo was something that would have been needed for this part of the lab that we had last night. Uh, in other words, writing a driver to prompt the user um, for the values uh, created an instance of the class using those values and then using the getters to display um, what's there. So the um, tester that I used um, did not do that. <laughs> um, so what I want to do is I want to modify this um, tester now, or I'm sorry, this, this driver, um, to do what um, as that's we should have done for the lab. In other words, I want to ask the user for a cheese, a price, and a month's age, create a cheese, and then display back to the user, this is what um, you had created. So I'm going to need some um, variables to hold on to what the user enters. Um, so let's see, this has like description entered, is a cheese, um, declarations, and um, job or data type and then variable name um, the price is going to be a double and there's a difference between little d and capital D little d is the primitive in which the uh, memory location holds the actual value capital D is the class which um, uh, the double class it's, it, 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 creation of one of those would actually be an object um, and so the little d here is because this is a primitive um, so this will be the price entered, and let me hold on to the months aged. So and that's an int, uh, months aged entered. And the other part of this demo was supposed to be a string, a double, and int. Almost sounds like a bad joke, a string, a double, and int to walk into a bar. <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> So this, these variables that I have here, these variables that I have here are going to hold onto um, the data that the user enters. Now I'm going to use the console, and so for the console, um, now by the way, the reason why I'm specifically using input in that keyboard is for those that had 103 or 105 here at Raritan Valley. Um, the book there always use keyboard and I do input um, mainly just to show that it's that the variable here the variable name in this case input it's not required to be keyboard um, keyboard probably makes sense um, but I'm, I always just do it as a way of stressing that it is uh, a variable of, of, of your choosing you just want it to be uh, meaningful uh, new scanner system.in and so system.n does refer to the uh, keyboard system.out as sort of the, 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 the console. The nice thing about uh, NetBeans is it realizes that, hey, we're referencing scanner, and it said, hey, do you want to add an import for that? So if I then, I, I click that little um, uh, hint, um, and then say include it, and so it added the import Java Util Scanner um, for me. If you are using a different IDE, you may have to manually type that in um, um, yourself. Okay, so now we can ask the user. Um, so I want to use, oh, uh, the cheat is, and I was getting this wrong last night, S-O-U-T tab, there's the print <clears throat> line, but I'll make a print out of this. So enter description of cheese. In, in uh, Java, when dealing with the console, it's sort of like a two-step process to get something from the user. First, we have to tell the user what to enter, um, and so this we would call the prompt. Um, and depending on what we want the user to enter, we may have to tell them the format to enter it or the data type. Um, and then we need, and I'll be lazy, so a description entered equals uh, input dot and I want to use the next line. The difference between next and next line, um, next, this next, and next line. Next only gets one token. Um, so suppose someone did Monterey Jack, uh, Monterey space Jack as the cheese that they entered. Next would only take Monterey. 
Jack would still be in the buffer. And then if the next thing we actually had was uh, uh, getting an enter or a double, it would crash because, um, well, we haven't put the exception handling in yet, uh, but it wouldn't be able to handle the, uh, that text for for an uh, integer or double. So by doing next line, it's everything the user types up until the time they hit enter. All that will get provided as um, the value in terms of the string. So um, this way I could enter Monterey space Jack and hit enter, and then the description entered would be uh, Monterey Jack. Um, so I want to get the price. And this will be the price entered. Oops. Okay. We'll do it this way. Next double. Now, um, I'm, for the purposes of this demo and the purposes of the lab, we're not doing any error checking here. Um, you have to user type something in that's not a double. Um, the, the program will get will get an exception. Um, and so one of the comments I made in class is that a number of the labs will make assumptions, like assume the user is going to enter in a valid number. Um, so I'm not doing uh, any error checking here. It's the user has to enter in uh, a double. Um, so enter the price of the cheese. And enter the number of months aged for the cheese. I did not in these prompts here specifically say like this would be dollars and cents. There generally is an assumption that if you're asking the user to enter a price, they're going to assume that they can enter in decimal points. Um, um, now here, number of months, there's nothing specifically saying that it has to be a whole number. So someone may type in 1.5 as one and a half half months um, and I'm just not specifying here in the prompt that I really want a whole number but that would be a better prompt uh, to let the user know um, that they should be entering a whole number okay so the month's age entered equals the input and this will be next int okay so this section right here I got the data from the user and I have them in variables. Now it's the kind of thing in a sense, by holding them in variables, we can report back to the user that this is what you, you had uh, entered. Um, also in a sense, if we later change the front end, it's only this piece that we would have to change. If we hadn't um, used these for uh, like embedding into the instantiation of, of the object, in other words, not use variables, but directly put them in, um, then if later we change the front end, well, then if those change, then that means the instantiation would, would have to change. Um, okay, so this here, I'm going to instantiate. Instantiate. Um, cheese object. Okay, so cheese, my cheese, is new. Cheese. Now, remember, when we worked on the cheese class, the constructor that we created expected the parameters in this order, string, double, int. So when I'm instantiating the cheese, I'm going to have to do string first, double second, and the int third. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the variables that hold the input from the user and I'm passing those in um, um, for instantiating the cheese which behind the scenes this is being passed to the constructor meaning when this line executes whatever the value is of the description entered that's going to go into here the initial description whatever the value that the user put in for um, the price that's going to go whoop, that's going to go into here the initial price and whatever the value is that the user entered for the months that's going to go in here to um, the initial uh, months um, so that 
here um, instantiates the uh, the cheese. Now let me just peek back here. Um, so I, I, it was a little more descriptive that way. And so let me just cheat a little. And since we have this, so let me now display the results. So this will be the description. Okay. Let's do this as the cheese price. Oops. Um, on this particular example right now, I'm not doing any formatting. Some of the demos that are in, um, I think it's the Java Review Continued uh, uh, demo for um, Thursday. Um, some of those, oops, if, I, if I can get this right, um, right here, the Java Review Continued, some of the things that are in there, let me just peek back here a second. Um, some of them here actually do get into formatting. Of course, I'm not going to find that now. Um, oh, actually, that might have been in the prior. Oh, no, the, there is some of that in the um, uh, in the payroll. There's a little bit of that there. The other one is actually in the demo from last night. There was the display neat class and although that's meant to be a demo of um, overloading that the other thing that's a demo of is formatting um, so the display neat class has some formatting uh, in there as well what was I saying oh I didn't format that okay <laughs> um, the cheese the months aged And my cheese months aged. And so now, if I did this right, if I go and run this file, it should be asking me for a cheese. So I should be able to put in um, uh, a cheese that has, um, well, a space in it. I don't know if I'm spelling this right. Uh, and the price uh, and the months aged. And so echoing back, Wisconsin Cheddar, um, 345 and 6. Um, so this is what I should have demoed last night in terms of a driver. And this is what the, um, the part of the lab, which I skipped over, was the part of the driver. Um, that part. Um, didn't do uh, last night um, um, anyway but that's okay so that is um, so getting input from the user um, so one of the reasons why I do this specific demo is this is showing getting a string this is showing getting a double this is showing getting an int what this demo is not showing is the issue with um, um, the carriage return being left behind in, in the buffer. I was going to add here a note, note, carriage return left in buffer. And that's only an issue if we then do another, um, either next or next line, um, that the carriage return is left behind. And it's something that in the demo that we're going to see this week, well, or it's one I'll just say it's there and not actually do it. Um, I think in here it specifically says payroll scanner issue. So it's the demo of the issue with scanner. Um, and so that one here shows how you can um, uh, eat the carriage return so it's not an issue on um, that the fact that it's being left in the buffer. Okay. All right. So again, that's the demo I should have done last night. I got input from the user and I instantiated an object.